Over the past few months, you most definitely would have heard the term cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, stuff like that. But most of us do not actually know what that is. I've heard a lot of people invest in cryptocurrencies, but they don't know what that is. This is the wrong approach. Cryptocurrencies aren't a get-rich-quick scheme. It takes a lot of emotional patience and good knowledge to make sound investment decisions. Or else you will just lose money. But most of us, like you, want to learn more about them so you can make these sound investment decisions. My name is Teres Padani and welcome to my channel. I'm here to educate you on the world of cryptocurrencies and blockchain so that I can help you make those sound investment decisions and educate you on the world of blockchain and cryptocurrencies. So now you must be wondering, why should I listen to this guy? What does he know about blockchain and cryptocurrency? So let me give you a history on how much I know. So two years ago, I took a Udemy course on blockchain to understand how it all works. Then I was very intrigued by it. So the next year I took a course with NPTEL and I actually topped 5% all over India. And recently I just completed my internship with Emergo, which is a blockchain company. So I know blockchain development and I also know a lot about how the blockchain works. And during this entire lockdown, I have been invested in the cryptocurrency market. I have invested a significant amount and I have made significant profits. I will show you my profits later. So yeah, I know quite a bit about all this and anything I say is usually done after quite a bit of research. So what is a blockchain? Well, in simple terms, a blockchain is a different kind of a database. Usually common database you see around you in Facebook, Twitter, Google and all common apps, they're usually made up of tables, graphs, trees. But in a blockchain, the database is made up of blocks, hence the term blockchain. So these blocks contain data and most of the time the data is about transactions. So the data is not stored in a single location, like in normal servers such as Facebook servers, Google servers, Twitter servers. But here the data is stored in every single participant system. Hence the data is decentralized, the blockchain is decentralized. Let me explain blockchain to you with an example. Consider this, you have some very important documents you know you have to store, but you're afraid that they might get stolen or modified. So you call up some people and you ask them to store a copy of your documents with them. So at any time your documents get modified or stolen, you'll know because you can compare it with the other copies. A blockchain works the similar way. So this ensures security, that is transparency, because everyone can see it, and decentralization. When we have decentralization, there is no single entity controlling the blockchain. So since the entire system is decentralized, there is no single entity, to make any modifications to the structure of the blockchain, a consensus protocol, well, like voting, is used among the members of the blockchain to make a decision. A blockchain also offers immutability. So once the data is entered on the block, there is literally no way that data can be changed, hence providing protection to that data. So the question comes into view that why blockchain? Why do we need a blockchain? So from the functional features of security, transparency, decentralization, there can be many applications in different fields. One common example that is used everywhere to explain blockchain is this. Consider you want to send money to a friend who stays in another country. Normally you use a bank or you use Paytm or PayPal to send this money. But there are middlemen involved. The companies are the middlemen. And there's always a possibility of getting hacked and there is always high fees at all times. But with blockchain, you can transfer money without a middleman, securely, quickly and cheaper. That is blockchain in short. So blockchain is the underlying technology for cryptocurrencies. So you must be having this question right now. Then what is cryptocurrency? Well, this is where the term mining comes in. You must have heard of this term in terms of Bitcoin mining, Ethereum mining, and stuff like that. So earlier I mentioned that data is stored in blocks. So how are these blocks created? So miners are the people who are part of the network and they do some computation on the systems to actually create a block. Since it's a de decentralized system, for miners to actually be a part of the network and create blocks, you actually have to give them something in return. What you give in return is a currency, and that is a cryptocurrency. Like Bitcoin, it's a reward. 
These coins are not issued by any central organization. These currencies are code. Just code. So right now in the cryptocurrency market, there are two currencies that are currently huge. Number one is Bitcoin and number two is Ethereum. So why is Bitcoin booming? So number one, normal currencies like Indian rupee, the dollar, more are being printed every day. So the more you print these currencies, the less valuable they become. But Bitcoin on the other hand, there can be a maximum of 21 million Bitcoin. That's it, that's the maximum, no more. So the value of the currency will keep increasing over time. And that is the reason why it's compared to gold. Second, transferability. Bitcoin is very easy to transfer from one source to the other without much fees. Let me give you a fun fact. Someone recently transferred around $2 million worth of Bitcoin for just $10. Just imagine how much the cost would be if it was through a bank. It would be a lot. And number three, security. It is nearly impossible to hack the Bitcoin code or find a loophole at this point. And that is why people trust it. Coming to Ethereum, you must have heard of this blockchain a lot as well. This has the second highest market cap just after Bitcoin. The main reason for the success of Ethereum is just one reason, smart contracts. Smart contracts are just code that is placed onto a block in the Ethereum blockchain. These contracts cannot change and they are marked in ink. It's like a stamp. You must be wondering what the use of this is. Well, there are countless uses. Let me give you one example. Elections. We have heard a lot about voting fraud, right? Parties manipulating elections to win. So. An election smart contract would consist of code that verifies if the person is a real person or not, if the person has voted before or any other requirements. And with a smart contract to handle the voting, any vote made in the blockchain cannot be modified at all. So technically, elections cannot be cheated at all. You will have an honest winner. This is just one of the applications of Ethereum blockchain. There are a lot more. Apart from Ethereum and Bitcoin, there are a lot of other currencies out there as well that have great potential. Some really popular ones are Cardano, Polkadot, Chainlink, Algorand, Litecoin, Dash. I mean, there are, there are so many. I'll explain a lot of them later in future videos if you all wish to learn more about them. So it's not just about Bitcoin and Ethereum. There are a lot of other currencies that have the potential to become as great as them. It's not about who reaches first to the market. It's about which currency actually provides the greatest potential. So now I'm going to move on to how you can invest in India. Because a lot of you have this confusion of how, I, how you can invest in cryptocurrencies in India. Well, there are a lot of exchanges to trade cryptocurrencies in India. But personally, I use Wazirx. Why? Specifically for three reasons. One, it's the biggest exchange in India. So a lot of people trust it. Two, it is owned by Binance. That is the biggest exchange in the world. And three, the CEO Nishtal Shetty is a strong advocate of crypto in India. So here's the thing about investing in cryptocurrencies. You can invest an amount as low as 100 rupees. That's it. In fact, that is pretty much how I started. I started off with 2000 rupees, invested in a currency called Steam, the Steam blockchain. I got a profit of 2000 rupees and then got a little more confidence and invested another 4,000 rupees. And it just kept increasing and increasing. And right now my portfolio has an investment of around two lakhs. With my investment of two lakhs, I have made around a profit of three lakhs. So if you're afraid of investing, try out a small amount first, like me, it's normal. Then depending on how that goes, increase your investments. Now, don't just jump into crypto trading just like that. Let me give you some warnings on how these markets work. A lot of people don't tell you how these markets work uh, when they tell you to get into crypto trading. So I'm going to be honest here. This is not a stock market. You will not see prices going down and up by one to 5% or five to 10%. Prices go down in huge dumps. It can go down from 25 to 40% at any instant. It might even go down hundred percent. But the important thing to remember here is you need to believe in the currency you're investing in. Don't, don't panic when this happens. It's completely normal. Because when it dumps this much, there's also potential for it to rise that much. So if you want great gains, you have to be prepared for great losses. So you need to be patient and you need to just wait it out if that's something like that happens. Number two, trading takes a lot of patience and discipline. This isn't a get rich quick thing. I'm telling you that again. So when you make a trade and see that it goes down immediately after, don't be stupid and sell. 
hold and be patient. I've done a lot of mistakes like that. I've lost a lot of money. But then in the end, you just want to learn from your mistakes, right? And finally, number three, invest in paths. This is an advice I cannot stress enough. Suppose you decided you want to invest 20,000 rupees, okay, in Bitcoin. Invest 10,000 rupees first at a certain price. Now, depending on whether the market goes up or down, invest the rest. Because if you invest 10,000 and then it goes down and then you invest another 10,000, your average price will be somewhere in between them. So you can maximize profit and then minimize loss. This is a very effective way and I suggest everybody follow it if you're getting into the trade. And number four, invest only after a dump. Like I mentioned before, there'll be huge dumps where the currency goes down 20, 40% or even 100%. So you have to wait for these dumps. There will be dumps. And when the dump happens, buy at that time. Because when it's low, you buy. And you have a lot more potential to get more profits. So these are my four points of advice for you starting out in investment. I'm telling you all this because these are mistakes I have made. You might make the same mistakes once you start out trading. But I'm telling you this so some of you can avoid these mistakes. If you have a question about trading, just drop it in the comments and I will help you out 100%. Okay, so if you are a person who has been inspired by this video <laughs> by any chance and want to invest, I will give you some currencies which have potentials. So let me tell you, this isn't financial advice. I will not be responsible for any losses. Uh, you need to do your own research. I'm just here to help you kickstart your journey and give you news and will help you out at certain points. So let's get into it. Currency one, Cardano. This blockchain has actually risen around 200% over the past two weeks. It has been my greatest investment and there's a lot of work being done on the blockchain. So I will make a separate video on it later, but uh, do your research and see if you find this interesting. Number two is Polkadot. So this currency also has a huge potential as well. It's pulling in a lot of developers to build applications on this blockchain and it's pulling people away from Ethereum and towards Polkadot. So look into this too and uh, you won't be disappointed at all. And there are some other currencies such as Chainlink, Dash, Theta. I will give you more videos with explanations on these currencies if you want. Any questions just drop them in the comments. Now I hope uh, this video actually gave you a little bit of an introduction to what cryptocurrency is, how it all works. It might not be the perfect explanation but I have linked a lot of articles down in the description below read through them understand them before investing and then if you have any questions let me know till then goodbye now a lot of you might be wondering why invest in cryptocurrencies when you know it might get banned in India well I have a lot to say about that first of all even when it gets banned I think the government will give around uh, three to six months for everybody to liquidate their holdings and number two these three to six months can be huge actually you can make a lot of profits in that time period as well and number three I don't think they're gonna ban trading at least in cryptocurrencies uh, so as long as cryptocurrencies are still legal I will keep making these videos and uh, let's hope how let's see let's see how it turns out uh, I hope it turns out to be better because well otherwise this would be for <laughs> no use but yeah let, let's see how this goes thank you for watching